Uh, I guess it's time to ask, have people gotten over optimistic and, and are valuations too rich? What does your work tell you? Uh, so thanks for having me on as always, Mike. And I think, you know, if you looked at the results of the poll you highlighted earlier, it certainly does point to a lot of enthusiasm in the market. I agree with one of your earlier guests who said with the clients he's talking with, everybody's, you know, kind of cranky and not feeling all that great. But when we look at the AAII data, which is, again, is more of the retail side, um, it does look like sentiment is starting starting to get a bit extended. It's not at the hold your nose and sell signal yet, but it's starting to get pretty close to it. From a valuation perspective, my work says there's a little bit more room. My valuation and earnings model combined tell us the, the kind of bull case on the market is 4,700, 4,800, but that is really at, at cross purposes with what we're seeing from the sentiment side. So I think it's a very, very tricky market. And look, I agree with your now what comment, Mike. I've been reading through <laughs> earnings call transcripts and I mean, all the old narratives are fading away and nothing all that interesting is jumping up to take its place. So it's it's been a pretty, you know, sort of frustrating reporting season for me from that perspective. What has that done for your outlook to, let's say, 2024 earnings? Is it kind of too early to make the call as to whether uh, there's further downside or whether they're reliable at this point in terms of the consensus? So we're pretty far below the consensus. Now, I tell people not to get too alarmed about that. I'm at 227 is my early cut of 2024. Um, the consensus, I believe, is still around 243. Now, numbers are usually way too high at this point in the process. So that's why I tell people to calm down a little bit about my forecast. That being said, one of the things we've got baked in is the consensus view that inflation will return to kind of the low 2% range next year, and that does depress your revenues. Um, one of the things I have actually noticed, some of the more maybe interesting parts of this reporting season have actually been companies are softening. They're like, hey, everything's great with pricing. The, the commentary around pricing is softening, and we've had a number of companies say that's because cost pressures and inflation is moderating, so that's going to bring the pricing strength down with it. That is very consistent with what we're coming up with in our earnings model. So I think you're starting to get some hints of that, you know, kind of headwind to earnings from moderating inflation next year. Where does that leave you in terms of groups that you would emphasize or, or themes or factors that look uh, ripe right now to invest in? So I think it's really tricky from a sector perspective. We still want to have some value exposure in here. Um, we've had, you know, sort of a nice reaction for energy and materials companies to earnings beats. I think there's a little bit of catch up in the short term that some of these value and cyclical sectors need to have. That being said, I'm really hesitant to abandon all of my growth exposure. So we're hanging on to an overweight with tech, and it's not our favorite place in the very short term. But we do like it longer term because we do think that you're going to be heading into a recovery that's subpar economically, and growth stocks typically do well in that environment. I've been joking with people today. I don't love all the commentary I'm reading on AI. I understand why a lot of investors are annoyed and rolling their eyes. Um, but I do think there is something there, and I do think a lot of the secular, you know, kind of long-term efficiency tailwinds, not just from AI, but from tech and software companies generally are still around. So I want to hang on to those stocks, but, you know, I understand the frustration some clients are feeling. Yeah, we did race right to a kind of a hype moment, but uh, can't dismiss it out of hand. It's pretty nuanced take, Lori. Thanks very much.